welcome to another episode of Perspectives with Gwen. We have strategist, speaker, leader, host of the Impact Podcast. Piso Dube, thank you so much for coming on our platform. Thank you, ma'am. It's good to be here. Uh, <laughs> so, let's go. Talk I to me. I think Talk because me. you come across as a very serious person, so we've got to get into I this come across as a very serious I'm person. Quiz questions, yes. That's terrible. No, when, when okay. I when I walked in this room, when, uh, okay. was I lying? Did I look very serious? <laughs> I don't intimidate my people. <laughs> you you came Me, here I'm not sure. straight face, I'm getting smiles, suit, yeah. ties, everything I don't know. ready. I don't, I don't know if no. I'm coming okay. serious. Let's get into some quiz questions and get to know you a Let's little bit more. Let's do it. Let's do if it. If you could eliminate one thing from your daily routine, what would it be and why? Whew, one thing from my daily routine. Mm -hmm. Oats. I don't like oats. It's, okay, but it's a healthy breakfast. Get rid of it. If, if you have to eliminate with something it. that's better, I would. Okay, so I, I train a lot, and so oats is one of the well. It's said to be one of the most important, like one of the best, most healthiest breakfasts. So if I could get rid of oats, I would. Also, I went to boarding school uh, from grade six to oh. matric, and uh, we had three meals right. um, uh, in Eastern Cape, Bati, Mpogo. Okay, yes. At uh, Iput. Yes. Uh, we had Kellogg's or Rice Krispies, mm -hmm. and the third one was Oats. So me and Oats have a very deep relationship. It goes very far back. Let's get rid of the Oats. <laughs> okay. Because I was about to ask. Sure. If you, you, because that's simple. You can get rid of it. It is. Are there no other alternatives? There probably are. I just haven't spent time to investigate okay. them. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. Let's see. If you could be... If you could be magic, magically fluent, fluent in any language, what would it be? Probably Spanish, because probably one of the fastest growing languages right now. It's important to be able to speak it. Mm -hmm. um, and we know the global economy, um, the way in which the world is moving, um, the interconnectedness, whatever the case might yeah. be. So for sure, if you want to be more effective on a global level, um, and language is important, by the way, to some of these things, right? Yeah. You know, what does Matiba say? speak to a man in his language, speak to his yes. heart. So, Spanish. Okay, cool. If you could teach a subject, what would it be? Leadership, without a doubt. We need to... Uh, no, but that's obvious. No, yeah. You, oh. It's something different. Man, you asked me. <laughs> what was that right now? <laughs> no, pick something different. I think that's pretty straightforward. We know you for leadership. Okay, fine. Ah, uh, something other than yes. leadership. High school, primary school, High tertiary, school. doesn't matter. High school. High school? Life sciences, physics, maths, English, Zulu. Sport. Aye. Is that an option? Surely, guys, we all did PT here. Is sport an option? Surely. No. Is that not an option? Not in South Africa, at least. Is that not an option? No. Guys, I don't have answers for you again. <laughs> what do they do? Aye. But let me tell don't you Don't be strategic with us. Just no, but let simple, me tell you why it's sport, though. Uh, well, okay, okay, go on. Because I'm trying to think of something else that's... On, on, on the sporting field, mm -hmm. right? There's so many things we learn unknowingly, right? If you, okay. if you want to talk, you can't be the best if you're not disciplined in sport. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk diligence, we're talking sport. If you want to talk mental capacity and capability, the ability, this is why people love Djokovic. He's a tennis player. I'm okay. a big fan of tennis, by the way. Okay. People love Djokovic because that man can be 5-1 down. And this is the second set. This man is evidently losing. Mm -hmm. And it's 40 in the point score, whatever. I think it's like 40-40. 40 love or whatever in the point score. This man is going to lose this game. It's, it's about to be game set match. And Djokovic has the ability to come back. And he will win that game and take it. This is why he gave Federer a problem. He's whole towards the end of Federer's career. By the way, my favorite is Federer. We don't like Djokovic, Rod, yeah? But Djokovic came and gave Federer a problem, gave Nadal a problem, gave all these people a problem because of m resilience, mm. mental capability, the capacity to come back. That's probably one of the most important things in the world. So I would want to be involved, if not leadership, because I could not have that. No. Then give me 
Let me be active in the sporting space because there's so many, I think, principles and values, teamwork, right? We talk about in this economy, modern economy, we talk about collaboration, the importance yeah. of collaboration. Yeah. Where do we get that from? If, you, if you're in a rugby team, you better believe you're going to learn that there's some times where I'm not going to be the one who scores the try past the ball. Yeah. That's teamwork. So let me do, so, let me do PT. So not history, not hospitality. Can you cook? I mean, to save our lives. Uh, yeah. Okay, we've got our answer. We won't, we won't, we won't be hungry, guys. We we'll have eat. our, aye, we have we'll our eat answer. And we'll live to see another day. If he offers <laughs> you a meal, please. Um, history is important. Um, the, the, the thing is, is so as, as I progress in life, um, I've begun to realize the importance of some of these things. Yeah. I'm, I'm generally not a big history fan, me inherently, mm -hmm. but I understand and realize and appreciate the importance of history. Yeah. And just like 10 years ago, I wasn't a leadership fan, right? Oh, okay. I've always been a leader, mm -hmm. but I've never necessarily sat down and said, okay, let's read on leadership, like let's grow in the leadership. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't really a thing. And so then I opened leadership book and before I knew it, I had read Dozens of leadership books. Mm -hmm. and, but I started with business books. Then I moved to leadership oh, books, okay. right? Um, because I was always certain on the one aspect, which was business. I always knew that I'm going to be mm -hmm. active in the business space. But now, as a, again, the more you progress in your career, in business, whatever the case might be, politics, leadership, you begin to realize that history is important because nothing's new yes. under the sun. And there are certain principles that have always been there. Mm. And you can read history from different aspects of society, communities, backgrounds, whatever the case might be. And I think it just shapes your worldview. Yeah. And it gives you, a, it, it equips you yeah. to a large degree. So history is important. Yeah. Um, have I read many history books? No, definitely probably something on the to-do list. So. Would you consider the Bible to be a history book? I would consider the Bible to be the I most... Think you think so? I think it is. Tell me why. I mean, it's history. What Jesus, is he here now? No. Was he here then? Come yes. on now. So Come on history. now. Take us to church now. And ma. also, it, it, you know, <laughs> history for me is interesting because sure. it gives you the, the true, authentic uh, life happenings and progressions. Sure. So history, sure. it happens. Sure. You know, sure. we can't, you can't deny history. You can't argue history. How do you argue that you existed here on, on the 14th of April 2024? You know, it's, it's real. It's here, it's now. It's, it's, ha it's happening. Sure. And your kids or anyone coming after you will know that, okay, it is what it is. You can't argue history. You, you can't argue history, but the man who pens history has the opportunity to define or describe or... Oh, alter the narrative yeah, yeah. in a okay. way that suits mm. oneself or yeah. himself or herself. Yeah. And so even around the historical conversation, I think it's important to, in fact, this is period to read broadly mm -hmm. because we could read on apartheid, la ekai. Mm. Let's not go far. Here's Africa. We can read on apartheid and I can tell you now that there's gonna be many different angles, many different views, many different narratives on the same topic. But there's only one truth. Mm. But there's many different narratives on this topic. Yeah. So read broadly, and then you decide what your middle, you know, down the line is, or what you will accept to be truth. But read broadly. Mm. Now the problem in modern society, if you will, is that there's too often the left, and there's the right. Yeah. And nobody wants to listen to yes. anybody. Yeah. It's what I say, and that's it. Or it's what I say, and that's it. And nobody's willing to listen. If I'm think, in fact, I think one of the biggest problems, again, or challenges that we have is just we've not become, or we've lost the fabric of just being a listening people. Listen, mm. keep quiet, don't say too much. Just sit down, listen. If you want to be an effective leader, listen. Mm. Listen to your people, listen. Sure. So, yeah, I didn't even know what I was talking about, but yeah. <laughs> how, did you, how did you realize that you are a leader? So, for me, I was fortunate 
in the sense that, you know, um, <laughs> you know, high school, primary school, I was fortunate that I was, I was always, for some reason, always given leadership positions. So oh, it? whether I it's, kids. yeah, I, I can't, oh, so I'm definitely Re not a teacher. Write the names down. Please, it's definitely not yeah. me. Tell me who was talking. <laughs> Tell me who was being naughty when I was away. And I think the funniest thing about, you know, me and my background is that for some weird reason, yes, I might have been head boy and leader and what, what, what but I was. Ah, you see. No, but you see, the, 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 don't, don't draw <laughs> okay. to conclusions too quick now, Gwen. <laughs> there was always this aspect of still being able to be with, uh, I don't want to use the word cool guys, but the cool mm. kids. So for some weird reason, I managed uh, mm -hmm. to, to merge those worlds. So no, I was not the guy saying, uh, right and that. No, I was definitely not a teacher's pet. Okay. Furthest thing from it. Okay. But um, for some reason, like I said, I was always... Um, given leadership positions. And so from an early age, I knew that I had something in me. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, but I want to do a quick diversion. And I think it's important because a lot of people think that leaders are born. Now, you can be born with certain qualities that make you more effective as a leader. Mm -hmm. But leaders are not, everybody is a leader. Okay. And that's important because Leadership is influence. And if you have influence, by virtue, you're a leader. You're a leader. So I ask people all the time, do you have a brother? Do you have a sister? Do you have a mother? Do you have a father? Do you have a friend? Do you have friends? You're talking about your high school friend or varsity friend. You, you, you have influence over her and vice versa. She can influence mm. you. Sure. Now, how you use that influence, positively, negatively, is a completely different discussion. Mm. But the point is, if you have influence, by virtue, you are a leader. I'm not saying you are a good leader, mm. but you're a leader. So everybody's a leader. Now, there are certain skills and traits and capabilities, whatever, that you can build to be a better leader, mm -hmm. but you're still a leader. So I, to answer your question, though, very simply, I, I, I think I was one of the fortunate ones to I have always known that there was something in me mm -hmm. because of always being given leadership positions growing up. Okay, maybe yeah. backtrack to before you get to school. Sure. How was home? Was also sense. that installed in you? Okay, were you, you know, reinforced towards it? Oh, you're actually good at this. Oh, you can do this. You know, how was home for you? Hmm. It's an interesting question. I mean, I think to a large degree come from a very supportive family makeup construct, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, um, in a very simple sense, often we're supported in certain things and you know, yeah, life was always spoken, you know, over certain things. I've never, guys, my journey is probably one of the, not one of the most interesting, but it's, it's an interesting journey. I mean, mm -hmm. if people go back, what, eight years from now, I was on radio. Really? Exactly. Nobody knows this. I was on radio, campus radio, at Varsity. Me too. Were you? Yeah. Which radio show? Radio DUT. Radio DUT? Nine to, I think it was nine to one or something. Because uh, I used to skip my class and then my friends would have to catch me up. For real? <laughs> yeah. Wait, nine, nine to one in the morning? Morning. Morning. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you were oh, that person. I'm, yes. I see you. What do they call it? Um, so uh, our show was the AM to PM show. Something like that. They call it like the brunch yeah. slot. That's yeah. lot. Brunch. Okay, perfect. So, I, I mean, I was um, mid mid weekday lunch, so one okay. to three. Okay. So there was a time in life where entertainment was what I was pursuing. So I was on oh, radio. Okay. I had a band, I sang. I, that was what I was doing. I was in that space. Um, and never once did anybody say to me, I was <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because your dad is a pastor. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fuller stayed in the church. Okay. Okay. Stayed. My, my father has never once, my mother has never once sat me down and said, I, Chief, you're born we don't know. You know? Mm, okay. So I've always been supported. Um, I came to the decision of my own accord that that was not 
uh, the space that I should be pursuing and there's something different for me mm -hmm. um, with a focus on business and leadership. But I've, I come from generally a supportive background frame of, yeah, yeah, if you will. How important is that? I mean, we live in times where it's very easy to reproduce or have your own structure of family. Like, mm. I can decide that, okay, I want to have kids, but I don't want a man. Yeah. You know, those are the options. Or well, not for me, certainly. But, yeah. I mean, it's, it's real. It's happening right now. You know, mm. how important for you is constructing an environment for children that will be conducive for them to become who they were meant to become and also what's your preferred family structure that you perceive to be the most conducive and you know <laughs> best guys Gwen to won't reproduce let, and raise kids Gwen won't let me leave here without something controversial she wants oh, it she wants it she wants it. she wants it it's just a question yeah, I'm just it. doing my yeah. job <laughs> earlier on she said I'm picking the safe route now she's busy putting things in I can hear I, see if you want to be controversial <laughs> that's your that's your own thing I'm just asking questions to, to the first bit of your question, I, I, think it's, I think it's so important. You, as a parent, literally have the ability to make or break your children. Um, you have a huge level of influence over their lives and, and you impact their journey in such an incredible way probably one of the biggest problems in the world in which we live in today is that mm. we have <laughs> people who are children having children. Mm. And we understand not everybody, some of these are mistakes, not everybody yeah. wanted this to happen, fully, fully, fully granted and agree. And I hear that, and I, but I think it's very important um, for people to, to, to do things when it's right, when you're ready, mm. right? Um, because of precisely that, you have such an important role to play in how you mold and impact and, you know, this person. Mm. Not only today, but tomorrow. What that person becomes is a reflection of where they come from. And if where they come from was dysfunctional, they're probably going to be a dysfunctional person in, 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 in society. Mm. And so it's critical. Um, to the second part of your question, I do believe that there is an ideal makeup. Mm. And I think what works ideally for me in my view is a family construct um, that consists of parents that are married um, and that can provide. And providence is broad. Yes. One of the aspects is financial mm -hmm. security, but another aspect which is critical mm -hmm. and which we all too often overlook is is just quite simply emotional. Mm. And that's why it's so important to have the child when you're ready for the child. Mm. Because if you're not in an emotional place to emotionally support, mm. then already we've started at the point of departure was a, was a place of disadvantage. Mm. We've already started at a, sure. at, a, at, a, at a disadvantage, right? Sure. And of course, the human experience is a journey. Yes. Right? Yes. So we're never 100% there. But we're definitely at places in our journey where we are better off than where we were. Wow. So you do it at a place where you're better off, if that makes mm. sense. Right? Yeah. Now, nobody can dictate that timing to you. But if you're open to the council, then that's what I would say. Mm. You know, sit back and think about it. Um, and, 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 and take certain decisions and steps in life when you're at a place where you believe that this is the time. I'm in a place in a position that I can give my best to this thing and, 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 and do right by it, whatever that might be. Mm. Yeah, that's what I would say. All right, okay. Do you consider yourself to be an alpha male?
And do alpha males make better leaders? What's an alpha male? <laughs> According to Google, please tell me what does Google say? Thank you. Uh, self assertive, just knows their worth, knows their value, perceive themselves to be of great value and influence in society. They, they're just themselves and they are comfortable in themselves. And I think also they have that leadership aspect also. But I'm not sure because also there is an element of narcissism that can, you know, take a direction there. So there's quite sure. nuances that are also sure. combined sure. in the alpha sure. male figure. Sure. So I'm not sure how, how, you know, how informed you are about the alpha male concept and also do you believe in it? Do you consider yourself to be there? So first of all, let's start here. Gwen, Gwen knows the definition of alpha male, guys. Did you hear all that, that, that description? I mean, yeah? I can see definition, Google. Down I call. I'm inquisitive. Thank you, ma'am. Hence, hence, I'm very inquisitive, so I, I'll search. I'll, I'll try and... Yeah. Uh, and um, number two, I, I, I think similar to you know, what we just discussed now, words are important, terminology is critical. Mm. And so sometimes we must think about the way in which we term these ideas. Mm -hmm. Another idea, and I will get, I will answer the question, another idea is toxic masculinity. Yes. Right? Yes. So people talk about toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. And I love Adam Grant, so I listen to a lot of podcasts, I love Adam Grant, he's mm -hmm. an incredible thought leader. And, and he says, well, he thinks that the word toxic masculinity is not necessarily helpful. Okay. Awesome. So let's think about this. If we're trying to achieve something, then let's frame it in the best way that it helps us get to the desired end. Mm -hmm. and, if, and what he's basically saying is that toxic masculinity inherently suggests that masculinity is toxic. Ah. Okay. And I don't necessarily disagree with him. Um, so he says, let's frame the idea in the best way to help us to achieve. So, so if we're framing it in a negative light, mm -hmm. it doesn't help us get to solving this thing. We agree toxic masculinity is an issue in society, mm -hmm. but let's frame the conversation around it in a positive light so that we, it can help us. That's why he said he doesn't believe that the, the framing, the terminology of it is helpful. That it can help us achieve what we're trying to achieve, which is to correct or recorrect men in society today, or the idea of masculinity. Would that not be positive masculinity to maybe counteract the toxic? Probably, right? So we can talk about the terminology, I, I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. But I, I agree with him when we, when, when, and, and the thing about the, the world that we live in today because of social media is that every, these things become buzzwords, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, business context is digital transformation. It's mm -hmm. artificial intelligence. Yeah. It's, 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 these are buzzwords. Yeah. And in, societal, in a societal context, it's the same thing. Toxic masculinity, alpha male, feminism is a huge yes. one, yeah. right? So all I'm saying is that number one, my, 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 my first point is, is just think about the framing of these ideas. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe it would be helpful to frame, in the, frame them in the best way that helps us serve what we're trying to actually achieve. That's one. Two, when it comes to the idea of an alpha male, <sighs> I'm not crazy about the term, and that's why I started with terminology. I'm not crazy about the term alpha male. What I think is more important is being an effective male. Mm. And what does that look like? Who's there? And probably that is one of the birthplaces of some of the critical issues that we have in our country right now. When you talk abuse, gender-based violence, um, it, it comes from you know, dysfunctional homes, families. It, it, one of the key contributors is this conversation around masculinity and manhood. What, what, does, it, what does it mean and what does it look like to be a man? My biggest problem is that I think in society, in the world today, we have connected or 
to the conversation of manhood, we, we have connotations around it. Mm. And some of these are dominance, mm -hmm. power. We talk in, we, which is why I asked for the definition, by the way. Mm -hmm. You just didn't give me the word I was looking for. Because when I looked at it, it power was one of the words. But you said strong. Mm -hmm. But what is, what is strength? Right? And so, so all these words, power, dominance, strong, assertive. Yeah. These are probably when, when, when men are probably being told most of the time that that is what being a man looks like. Mm, okay. If you get, yeah. so I talked about the connotations, right? Yeah. And so we need to think carefully about that because, and for me, it links back to the conversation around leadership. To be an effective leader is not just about power mm. or position or title. It's about relationship. Mm. So John Maxwell says you can't lead your people if you don't care for your people. Mm. So you're a leader, do you even care? Do you, do you gen and so a, a big word that's come up now is, is empathy. Mm. Emotional intelligence. Yeah. Do you care for your people? The best leaders care. Mm. The best leaders are in service to. The best men care. Sure. The best men are in service to. Okay. Providence, security. Emotional intelligence. The best men for me, they have a firm grip, grip and understanding around those ideas. Mm. When it comes to the conversation around power, and the reason why power is such an important one, because it, it, it's a huge thing in the world today, I think what's more powerful than power that's been framed in this domineering sense is if I can get you to do something, influence. Remember we said leadership is influence. If I can get you to do something, influence, without having to exert power, that's power. Sure. Right? I don't have to exert power. I don't have to be dominant. Mm. But I can get you to do something for me. Mm. That's influence. That's leadership. And so one of the things that I think is critical with, around the conversation about manhood and masculinity is leadership. I think if we become better leaders, we'll become better men. Mm. But it's important the way in which we frame the leadership conversation mm. and the way in which we frame the masculinity conversation. And all too often, we're using terminology like power, ideas, yeah. like power, strong, um, mm -hmm. alpha, this idea. And, and I think that there's so much more to leadership. And in fact, I think if that's all you think leadership is, then you don't know leadership. Do you think we have, <clears throat> excuse me, do you think we have full understanding of what submission is then? Because you find that it's quite prominent for people to advocate for women, also it's for people. Sure. Wives submit to your husbands. Sure. And then husbands, you know, lead, provide, you know, you are the head of the home and then the wife is submitted to the husband and then the, the children are obey. But in modern day society, do you, expect, do you think we have full understanding of those roles between the male and the female, because you, you mentioned something that effective leaders are mm. actually of service to, yep. which someone can also connotate that to submission. So, so yeah. who's submitting, who's leading, and also yeah. do you think we have a full grasp and understanding of those requirements for both genders? So I, I really like that. Um, and let me start by saying this. One, again, without a doubt, one of the challenges that we have in modern society is <laughs> uh, gosh, we have everything flipped on its head. But let's talk about 
the idea of submission. And I, and I love that you brought the Bible into it. So you say, <laughs> so you say that it talks about men, uh, women submit. Yeah. And people like starting there. Yes. But what people miss and overlook is that before that it says, men, love your wives. Mm. Yes. Yes. But it says something critical. It says, love your wives like Christ loved the church. Mm. Now, without belaboring the point, Christ died for the church. Thank you. So what is, what is being said to us there? You need to love that woman. Display the kind of love to that woman that Christ displayed for you. Mm. Because we are the church. His, his wife was the church, Christ. That, so, so you need to love. He says, love your wife. Mm. <laughs> mm. The way Christ loved the church. And Christ died for the church. So that, 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 that depicts to me a deep sense of love. That depicts to me an, an unconditional mm. love. Mm. Submission would be easy if men loved. Sure. And yes, let's, so let's be very clear on, 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 on a few issues. These are not simple ideas. Okay. Marriage is complicated. It's complex, right? And married people go through complicated things. Mm. The, the, I, the construct of marriage, the institution of marriage is complex and complicated in and of itself. So let's not just brush this over like it's a mm. simple thing. But the Bible is clear on this issue. Okay. Before we talk about submission, let's talk about you as the man loving that woman the way Christ loved the church. And I think what is being communicated to us there is that if you love her in that sense, in that light, then we won't even have to have a conversation around submission. Sure. She'll submit. Because you first did mm. what Christ said you should do. Not only as the man, but I will always put this word in as the leader. I think Christ gives man gender exclusive, mm. male and female. And everybody must pick their view. And that's the beauty about living in. OK, yes. Are yes. you with me? Your perspective. Okay. Are you with me? We are on perspectives with Gwen. 